Let's have a session on supplier evaluation. So if you're evaluating your suppliers, then you might want to use the Krawczyk model or the Krawczyk method. Of course, you could use Porter's Five Forces and you could think about the bargaining power you have over your suppliers. More details on Porter's Five Forces, click the card up there. But if you want to go into even more depth on those suppliers and the it depends on points that we get to at the end, then you might want to think about 1983 Peter Krawczyk's Krawczyk model as seen Harvard Business Review. So two ways that you would look at it, according to Mr. Krawczyk, is that you would look at your suppliers and the impact that they have on your profit. Does your supplier give you cost advantages? Does your supplier give you added value? Alternatively, the other access is the market that your supplier operates within. What is the perceived complexity for you in that supplier's market? Is it very complex? Is it very complex because it's a monopoly and then you could relate that back to Porter's Five Forces because you don't have much bargaining power? Is it an oligopoly or potentially a duopoly as we've seen with Airbus and Boeing in the aeroplane making market? Um, or is there fast technological change? Is it moving so swiftly you can't keep up with it and therefore it becomes complex to you? So, Crowdrick split them up into the fact that the impact on your profit would be high or low and the complexity of that supplier's market would be high or low. And then came up with four bits of that matrix. Firstly is strategic items. Strategic items is that it's a complex market from your perception and they have such a big impact on your profits. Clearly, strategic items, I mean, it's in the name strategic, they are going to be important to you. They are suppliers you want to keep sweet. You want to keep them happy. So you want to develop a long-term relationship. If you're developing a long-term relationship from a HR point of view, you might want to utilize centralized decision-making. Centralized decision-making because it's likely it's a global supplier or potentially it's some form of natural scarcity. So you want to focus on the long-term availability of these suppliers, whatever they may be, raw materials probably. Number two is Non-critical items. Now, non-critical items are clearly the opposite of strategic items. The opposite because you perceive the market of your supplier to be not very complex and also you don't think that these particular suppliers have much impact on your profit. So when we're thinking about non-critical items, well, you clearly want to just have a short-term relationship. There's no need to have this long-term strategic focus. Therefore, don't use centralised decision making, use decentralised decision making, delegate it down throughout your organisation. Um, you could think about the idea that these types of markets, these types of supplies, there's going to be an abundance of those supplies. Maybe it's, for example, pencils. There's lots of pencils, aren't there? So you might want to have a focus on process efficiency here. And what I mean by that is you probably want to automate these supplies. You don't want to waste time with labour doing it. Just automate these supplies because you need them, but they're not critical. Now, the more complex ones are leverage items three and bottleneck items four because they're somewhere in the middle. So if we deal firstly with leverage items, leverage items, low complexity or low perceived complexity in the market, but they will have a high impact on your profit. So they're important because they could give you cost advantages or they could give you added value. So for this reason, you want to give them a medium term relationship and you might want to still decentralize these decisions throughout your organization. But the key is because there's little complexity in the supplier's market, you've probably got room to buy big and negotiate. And if you can buy big and negotiate, then you could look to use your purchasing power. Again, you could relate that to Porter's Five Forces. Here, you wanna focus on cost only. You could be relating possibly purchasing economies of scales into this. Number four, bottleneck items. Bottleneck items, opposite of leverage items, because, well, you perceive the market to be very complex but doesn't have much impact on your profits. So you could think here, medium term relationship, but it's important to note that it is a complex market. It's a complex market, so you probably want to have centralized organization. The execution of those decisions might be at a decentralized level. And we're thinking here, it's probably gonna be a production-based scarcity as opposed to a natural scarcity as we saw in strategic items. And the last thing to think about here is you probably want to focus on cost, yes, but also reliability because it's a complex market. So you want to focus on the fact that you need to get these items and you don't want them to be bottlenecked. So that is the Krawczyk model. How to use it for evaluation? Well, you could be faced with this type of problem. Maybe you've got a cash flow issue. 
one of the solutions to a cash flow issue is you might want to extend out um, your payables, so delay your payments to your suppliers. Well, of course, you won't delay your payments to your suppliers if they are seen as offering you strategic items. It makes no sense to do that. It's dangerous. Complex market, they're important to your profits, you want to keep them happy, you want to keep them sweet, you want that long-term relationship, so you won't do extending payables there. But you might do extending payables if it's a supplier for non-critical items. So, if you're in an essay, you might want to think about, it depends on the type of supplier. Is the supplier a strategic item? If they are a strategic item, it doesn't make sense to extend payables. If they are a non-critical item, yes, it makes sense to extend those payables. And there you've added evaluation, depth of evaluation, and application, because you've used another model. Appreciate though that this isn't in the AQA spec, but there's nothing stopping you bringing it in to be absolutely mega. I hope that helps. I'll see you at the next sesh.